Hello and welcome back to how to evaluate out of state rental properties. I'm your host, Jeff Costa, and this is the second video in our series. If you go back and watch our first video, you will see that I had recommended that you find a local investment minded real estate agent in the markets that you're trying to work in. I typically focus on just one to two markets so that I can go deep, not wide. And once you have that agent, you want them to set up an automated MLS search for properties that meet your buying criteria. And in addition to that, you should also set up a Zillow search on your own with the same criteria. Sometimes there's overlap between those two lists and sometimes properties will prop up on one list and not the other. So it's good to have coverage for both. And today we're gonna to jump right in and start looking at a property that popped up on one of my Zillow searches. Now I'm looking for two or three bedroom duplexes in Rochester, New York and Buffalo, New York. And I know these markets because I grew up there. Um, they're also very good cash flow markets. So as a budding investor, the price points on the houses tend to be lower so I can get experience in real estate with a whole lot less risk. Now, this one popped up on my search, so the very first thing we're going to do is go into Zillow and start looking at photographs. Everyone does this, right? It is just a starting point. You can weed out a lot of things about a property by the photographs, and your goal for looking at properties is to get as get that done as quickly as possible. Get really good at it. Brandon Turner talks a lot about evaluating 100 properties. And when I first heard that, I'm like, oh my gosh, you have to be crazy. Who has time for that? You have time for that. And honestly, that is the only way you're going to get good at this. Do these. And, and you have to do a lot of them. And once you get that experience under your belt, you're going to start seeing patterns. And you'll be able to weed things out quickly. And that's what you want to do. If you, you want to be able to do what I call nexting this property. This property has something that I don't like about it. It doesn't meet my buying criteria. On to the next one. On to the next bus that's going to come down the street. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and start looking at this property. Now, I have opened the Zillow listing. So one of the first things I want to see in this listing again is the photographs. So we're gonna jump right into it and I'm gonna take you through how I evaluate this property. Now, the first photograph tells me something really interesting. I see a property that has someone taking care of it, right? I see uh, the grass has been mowed. I see that there are plants in the front, but more importantly, I see a two car driveway. Right, So I have a convenience here for my tenants that, that allows them to not have to park on the street, which is great. Now, uh, this is a, a house in the Northeast. I see something here I don't like, which is the window right here at the bottom. This should be glass block uh, for proper insulation. So I can already see at some point in the future, I might want to replace that. But overall, the property looks good and it looks like the existing landlord has maintained it, maintained it, right? The siding looks good. I don't see any unusual windows. I also see two entrances, one for each tenant, and this lucky tenant actually has a balcony. Now you can see a little bit of slope there, right? That may or may not be a problem, but that's why you always get a property inspected, right? This may just be an artifact of how this photograph was taken. Now, uh, I also see that there's vegetation here that might grow into my house, so I'd keep an eye on that so it doesn't actually touch the house. But first, first picture looks very good. And you know, something that uh, I, you've, I learned on the Bigger Pockets podcast was always look at the last photo, right? The first photo is, is going to be the listing agent trying to put the best foot forward on a property. So always go back one and see what the last photo is. Okay, here's the backyard, right? This is probably the worst picture uh, potentially in the lot, right? It's the last one they want you to see. We're at photograph 50 of 50. And what do I see? I see a little bit of a fence collapse. So 
If I own this, I'm probably going to have to repair that, right? Um, I see a fire pit though. That's a good thing. That might mean my tenants can throw some chairs around and sit around the fire. Uh, going back to the fence, I also see that some of it's stained, but some of it's not. It looks pretty bad. It's probably something that I would repair in the future, but isn't necessarily something uh, I would have to repair today. So interesting. Uh, I also see a, uh, a clothesline here, or one half of it, a clothesline post. You see a lot of these in the Northeast. Uh, where people used to hang their clothes out to dry before the age of washers and dryers. And this house was built in 1920. We just saw that in the, in the, in the uh, initial screen, so it's not unusual to have seen that. So let's go forward. And again, another view of the house. Uh, again, I see the two-car driveway. Uh, it looks good. Uh, I see the, the houses next door are also taken care of. We'll get into that a little bit later, but that's something you're kind of looking for, right? Is is this the best house on the block or is it in is it in a par with the other houses? Now, I also see something here that just may, looks like a probably just an electrical line or a line up to the dish that's up here. So probably not something to worry about, but something I would check uh, with my agent on site. So here's another view of the house. I can see there's a little fence here between the neighbors and yourself, uh, probably belonging to them. But again, still looks good even from this angle. Not sure what these are right here. I would go and ask. Uh, they look like artifacts for perhaps when this porch was rebuilt uh, in some fashion and they were never moved. But again, you're looking for cues, guys. You're looking for details. That, that might help you understand how this thing is laid out. Now, one thing I do see here is that I see this downspout doesn't seem to be going anywhere, but actually it might go into, looks like it's going, it's coming out of here and going up here, but I don't see the downspout that goes along with it. And again, it, it may be just an artifact uh, of the actual photograph, but that might be something I would pick on a little bit and make sure that the water is being taken away from the house. Um, over here, you can kind of see the same thing on that downspout. Uh, you get a little better picture, I think, than in any other photo uh, of that downspout. You know, that may need uh, to go over here, uh, or maybe it's fine just running down the driveway, but it's something you want to look at. So here we have a view uh, of the stairs going in. Those look solid. I don't see any issues in the foundation right here. Uh, and again, you have separate entrances for each of the tenants. So you've got the one in the front and the one on the side, which is kind of a nice convenience. So they're not, you know, running into each other, uh, Laverne and Shirley style as they exit their homes. Okay, here's the first kitchen. The thing that immediately jumps out at me is the cabinetry is really nice, uh, as is the countertops and the floor, but the appliances are dated. Now this wouldn't stop me from buying a property, but I know this area is a little more high end, so I would potentially consider adding to my, my budget the ability to put in some stainless steel appliances here. These look very old. They are still functional. It, it's not to say that you need these, um, but it's something that would actually help rental appeal. And you wouldn't buy these necessarily new. Uh, commonly accepted wisdom here is to go find scratch and dent at Lowe's. Uh, and sometimes local local areas have literally their own scratch and dent stores where you can pick up all this stuff, you know, relatively cheap. So if it has a scratch that the tenant can't see or doesn't really care about, bring it on, right? But you know, it looks like a nice kitchen from that angle. Here's a reverse angle. Uh, I noticed that there is a real a dishwasher here. Again, dated along with the other appliances in the home. But that's not a problem. I, I actually prefer to have my units have dishwashers because as a landlord, I pay for water in New York. And if I have a dishwasher, my tenants tend to use less water and my water bill is lower. So that's a good thing. The other thing I'm kind of looking for here, and it's kind of hard to discern it, uh, is do I see GFCIs in the in the outlets, right? Does that mean, because that's usually a signal of someone has modernized this to at least, you know, recent standards uh, so that they have safe outlets, right? It's just a little cue, um, but if that wasn't there, it's something that you would want to put in uh, for the safety of your tenants. So kitchen looks good size. Two people could work in here without necessarily bumping into each other. Right. But again, I don't know where this door goes because I am not in the property. So this is where that video walkthrough comes in super, super handy. 
Next room. This looks like a very small closet that was converted into a usable room. I would say this could be someone's home office, right? Probably, uh, or storage space, but probably nothing more. This is not a, a bedroom. And now you get a pullback view uh, of the property itself, or sorry, the, in the interior of the property. Nice uh, framing that looks good. The painting looks good. Uh, notice the window air conditioner. A lot of homes in uh, the upstate New York area do not have central air. So that means you know that you're going to see uh, window air conditioners. And you know one of the things that I, I, I definitely look for is does the, does the home have wood-based windows or newer vinyl windows, right? It's hard to tell here in this photo, but you want the newer vinyl windows. So uh, if you don't see those, that's uh, potentially a CapEx item that you would fix later on. Uh, here, interesting little architectural nook. I would see putting some plants here or something else, but kind of unique. Uh, makes the home feel uh, a little bit uh, different from the typical home. Uh, and you see a hallway here going likely to some of the bedrooms. So next picture, ah, you look down uh, into that room you were in. You can see that here is that side entrance, and this looks like some sort of living room here. This is a picture of that deck. Uh, it does look a little like it's leaning. Even in this photo, you can see the downward angle. So I would pick on that, uh, and I would ask my inspector to pick on that uh, to understand if that's level or not uh, and what we need to do to fix that. But. Uh, it could be a nice little area to put a chair out for a tenant. So in terms of usability, right? You know, put a couple chairs out and relax. Um, this is another look uh, into the living room. You can see that the fireplace looks like it's probably operational, um, but it may be closed off. That may be a cover, hard to say. And then you've got what's really interesting here. It looks like a little library almost with a bench and a bookcase. So not really a usable room per se, for anything but storage, uh, but kind of a nice little reading nook uh, for someone. You could put a, uh, a cushion down here and put your books in here and it's got a lamp already built in. And uh, let's keep going. So another view looking the other way, right? So a decent amount of usable space. You could mount a TV up here, couch could go here. You're always looking for utility for, for, for tenants, right? Like, is this something they could live in? Is there walkable space? Is it tight? And again, it's hard to judge from photos. You have to get in there and walk the property. This looks like a narrow room in the photograph, but could be very wide. But again, really nice touches here. You see some of the original wood and the original artwork and likely the original stonework around the fireplace. So nice touches makes it something that I would want to own. Uh, this is another view of that same room. So you can see the windows have blinds on them too. I always like to see that. That way I don't have tenants, you know, tacking sheets up on windows. Uh, I always keep these up to date as should you. Uh, they don't have to be anything expensive, but you know, give them, give the tenants the privacy and it makes the space look a whole lot better. These actually do look like older wood windows. Uh, now that you can see it here with the blinds up. So I would probably budget to have these replaced. Here's another look into that reading nook. Again, not a ton of utility here. Uh, for someone, I could potentially remodel this uh, in the future uh, to be something else, but it's kind of a, a clever little touch uh, for the house in the time period it was built. Uh, again, here's one, of, now here's one of the bedrooms, and again, we see another instance of a wall uh, air conditioner, right? This one looks to be a little bit older, but it looks like it comes with the property, right? So you're offering that amenity to your tenant. Now I see this room probably needs to be repainted, and you see some marks on the wall from where the tenant, ha a previous tenant, has put something up or uh, uh, defaced it in some way. Uh, and again, here's another way looking into the room. I noticed that there is a closet here, so that's great. So there's storage for this bedroom right in the bedroom. But again, you can see the walls probably just need a paint job, so I would budget for that. The tub looks relatively new, a little bit narrow, but a little bit older um, by the style. Um, don't love the blue paint, uh, but I, I kind of understand why they did it. Uh, because it kind of aligns with this very unusual looking, almost disturbing glass, stained glass window. Again, a very cool touch. Uh, it looks like something looking at you, but it's actually two Tiffany lamps. Uh, but, you know, I would potentially say leave this alone, but think about painting it 
uh, in the future to something more modern. Uh, but you do see, obviously, here's some privacy for the toilet. Uh, a little bit of a narrow space for the sink here. So you have some storage uh, over the, the sink itself, but not a lot, right? So the, the tenant here is gonna store stuff underneath this sink. Um, if you're, if you're a, a woman who has a lot of products and stuff, this might not work for a female tenant. Right? But notice, I think the, this looks like a GFCI plug up here, so that's taken care of. Again, you're always looking for utility to, to tenants. This room also looks really good. Carpet looks like it's in good shape. I would eventually rip that out in favor of uh, luxury vinyl plank, but it looks like it has several years of life left to it. Uh, again, you see the blinds on the windows, saves me the trouble of having to buy those and in installs, but the trim could use a little touching up, a little painting. And this room uh, looks like it also has closet space uh, for the tenant, so that's nice too. Um, and I believe this is another room or another look in the same room. You can also see here like an old phone jack uh, for when everybody had landlines, so kind of tells you you know, the age of the house a little bit. Yeah, this is definitely another room. Um, and this one has a closet as well. So I, I don't know, I might freshen this up with some, some uh, uh, gray paint from Sherwin-Williams, agreeable gray seems to be the choice to kind of match the carpet a bit. Um, now this is interesting, right? This looks like a weekend warrior uh, who has framed out and done the bulk of the work in the attic, right? We don't have flooring in here, but we've got probably insulation behind here and certainly the drywall is up. So when you look at a property, you want to think about like what's the highest and best use of this property well this is fantastic right i can throw some lvp in here get it painted and here's another usable room for a tenant right so my three bed bedroom for the unit upstairs becomes a four bedroom or a three plus right so again really a, a great thing to see right you can spend some money to finish this off uh, and make it a usable space for your tenant this is the upper unit you can tell because look out the window and you can see where we are interesting nice little stained glass here touch again period type touches but you can see that this this floor is really nice uh, and and notice that this one's occupied right so you have a tenant in here that you're going to need to do something with and i am not a fan of inheriting tenants uh, I like to get properties delivered empty, but that's not always the case, right? So when you've got an existing tenant, uh, you'll want to get them on a new program uh, with, a, with your property manager. I use a property manager because I'm remote uh, and make sure you, they go through the application process so that you get their credit score and their, hit, their, their criminal history and so forth, right? Don't just accept a tenant as is, but understand here that you're going to have to do some work. Uh, with an inherited tenant. We can get into that in a later episode. This is nice too. Uh, here you see a mirror actually above the fireplace. Probably not the greatest use of that space. Uh, they have a, a TV here. I would have probably put that on the wall and reclaimed the space, but a nice set of bookcases here. So, you know, kind of a nice space. Um, and you see, I think that's a little plug-in heater. Now that's a signal to me that I might want to look at how this house uh, he is heated, right? And how efficiently it works when I get my inspector in there. Is it cold enough that it doesn't put out enough air so it gets cold in here and the tenant decided that they need to have a space heater? Um, it's a signal, right? You're looking for little cues and never overlook cues like this about how the existing tenant is living. You can also see what looks like food bowls. So this tenant has a pet which may mean that there may be pet odors or pet stains in the property. Again, things you want to look for. Ah, there we go. There's the pet cage, right? So validated. We looks like we have a cat, perhaps a small dog. Okay, not a problem, right? But overall, like again, you're looking at the quality. The I don't see the floors look great. So you know you don't haven't seen dog claws tear up the floor or anything like that. And here's that same uh, little nook. From, up, from we saw down below and here the tenant has some grow lights and a plants. Uh, these don't look like marijuana plants. <laughs> I don't know they, they, uh, they have grow lights on them. I don't know why we have a pink Christmas tree still up and drying racks, but 
Uh, we'll overlook those. We have a modern thermostat here. That's good. Uh, these look like they have some wear and tear and might need some fresh paint. Uh, again, you can see that because these units do not have a central AC, we've got the um, alternative to a window-based mount in this duct-based uh, version of an air conditioner, right? But this is kind of a storage room, but it could, you know, looks like it could easily be something else. Here is the second kitchen. Again, I see you get a little, some signals here about the previous uh, or the existing owner, right? Like. Okay, something went wrong with the stove and they have this great new stove in place, uh, but the dated dishwasher, right? And again, I can't really bemoan someone for not fixing what's not broken, but if you're trying to command premium rents in a premium neighborhood, I would consider changing these out uh, and, and doing it uh, in, a, in a way that makes it classy. Now, these, these poles look a little dated. I wouldn't necessarily change these. Uh, the countertop looks great, sink looks newer. So, you know, mostly a pretty good kitchen, right? But, you know, consider, and, and it's got a range hood. You don't see that very often, so that's a nice touch. Here's another view of it. And uh, a little bit of a smaller fridge. It looks like there's a, that's, a, that's done for a reason because it looks like you can see either cabinetry or a closet back here. Uh, again, it looks like you've got the stainless steel here, but you don't have that stainless steel dishwasher. So um, I wouldn't change this necessarily. Uh, another cue that you're looking for here is in, in terms of how the tenant is living, right? Look at this. We have a cart for storage of pots and miscellaneous mason jars on top. That's a signal to me that we don't have enough countertop space or storage space for the tenant. So if I was going to remodel this kitchen or do something differently, I might try to find a way to add more cabinetry to it, right? Uh, and, and consider how I might do that. Um, here is that same space we saw in the lower unit uh, that was just a narrow little room, but here you can see that they've actually converted this quite nicely into a little office nook. So if someone's working from home or just wants a desk, here's a way to do it. So really nice utility there. Here's one of the bedrooms. Again, we see the same thing. We see the wall air conditioner, but a good space for this, uh, for this room. You can put two nightstands and a queen size bed easily in this space. Uh, they have a closet right here for their own use and a, a, a dresser right here. Um, so I would, and, and again, I see another one of these. I don't know if that's a, a, a fan or heat, right? So I've seen two of these in this space so far. So I'm just wondering, like, is there something going on with the heat? Here's an unusual picture of a close-up of the floor, but, you know, typical wear and tear, but the hardwoods look really nice. It's a nice thing to have, uh, and you want either hardwoods or LVP in your rentals. Here's the bathroom. It looks the same as the old one, a bit dated, uh, but still usable easily by the tenant. Uh, same kind of funky stained glass here. But again, now you see this one's occupied. And I mentioned earlier, we don't have a lot of storage space. This is definitely a female tenant and you see how they're kind of making some space here. So I might even just add some cabinetry where that toilet is uh, and add some space. Now we're jumping into the basement and we see that we have a little storage space here. Uh, washer and dryer usually conveys with the unit. Uh, this is for tenant, the one tenant that's, that's there. We should expect, but check uh, that there is also space for a second washer and dryer for the other tenant. And again, we see the old style windows here. I would replace these with glass block uh, to help weather the winters in upstate New York. Here we see a very new furnace, great sign, uh, a, a blanketed water heater, which unfortunately doesn't let us see uh, exactly when it was uh, made, and we'll want to know that, um, but it looks like it's in good shape and vented correctly. And uh, here's the second washer and dryer, so confirmed. We have washers and dryers available for both tenants, so that's great. Again, no glass block windows. Here is the, the, same, uh, the other water heater. It looks like it's wrapped again. Uh, very, very nice touch from the homeowner. You don't see this very often. Okay, and then here's the other furnace for the other unit. So again, looks really good. Looks pretty new. Um, not, not as new as the other one, but you'll, you'll certainly have a, a, a life, a long life on these. Now we get into the backyard and looks pretty good. You know, some weeds in the grass, but maintained. And you see a shed back here, great little amenity for your, for your um, tenants to store things outside of the basement, right? Or store some, some yard tools. 
see some PVC pipe over here. We probably want to clean that up. And I see a drain that's going far, you know, the right way away from the house. So that's good. And I see another one over here that might actually be the downspout for this over here that I'm looking at. It might not just be PVC, but this is what you want to check on. And then we're back to the backyard. Okay, so I like this house. It looks pretty good. What's the next thing I'm gonna go look at? I wanna know the neighborhood and something about the neighborhood that this house is in. So, and and I wanna kinda of learn some of the details, right? It's, it's, it's essentially, uh, it's told me here the things I already know. One of the things that I wanna know is is essentially what's the property tax for this house because in New York State property taxes are high and as you add property taxes to your deal it can really blow it up. Um, the interesting thing here too that I want to call out on a Zillow listing is that you have a four-day listing right and it's got this many views but only 20 saves. It's kind of low right for for a, a listing so that tells me that you're not gonna have as much competition. When you see saves in the hundreds, be prepared for a bidding war, right? But a low number of saves means either people are overlooking this house or haven't seen it uh, and so forth. And uh, I know by looking at the listing that this offers are doing for this house, uh, I believe on Tuesday morning. So there, and I'm recording this on a Sunday. So you only have a couple days, right? So, and you can see they only had uh, one open house that is actually today. So uh, that's something I want to look at. But to get the property tax information, you have to expand this section of Zillow. And I read through this, right? Don't, you know, don't overlook this. You know, one of the things I look at here is the total square footage, right? So you cut this number in half and, you know, what that tells me is you've got, you know, what, uh, 1550 uh, usable space for your, for your tents. That's a lot of room. Right, a 3,100 3, square foot duplex gives your tenants plenty of room to stretch out. I really like that. Um, I, I shy away from buying units that have a thousand or less um, because I think people have stuff and need places to put it. Um, but down here, I, again, I read through all of this, uh, you know, understand the year it was built. Uh, don't overlook any of this in what you're doing. Um, and then here's that annual tax mail, right? Pretty high for those who are used to property taxes in the twos and threes. 83.35 looks pretty high. But we're gonna cover that when we get into reviewing the property. Now, the next step I wanna do here is go look at the neighborhood. So I will copy the address and paste it into Google. And here, I'm looking for a couple of things. I'm looking at, well, what is this actually near? And I happen to know um, by clicking on, I click into this, that this is a really nice area of Rochester. It's near a street called Monroe Ave, which has a lot of stuff on it. It's a hip, cool place to be. Uh, and if I zoom out, I see the green space, right? So I'm looking at a, a cool park. So someone could conceivably run over to this park or walk over to it, you know, from this area, from this home and uh, be able to go to a park. So nice amenity. Right. And then, you know, I'm looking at where I am on the street. It's, you know, what's on this street. There's a food market, uh, a Vietnamese restaurant, that kind of thing. Right. And ah, I've got convenient interstate right here. Right. Not not too close, but, you know, close enough. So the next thing I want to do is look at the Google Street View. And this is something you absolutely must do. Right. Because you have to look at the property pictures here as glamour shots. Right. Uh, a professional photographer has taken these photos. They're not from an iPhone six. Right. So you want to see what this thing actually looks like in practice. So you don't know when this was taken by Google, but it gives you a lot of clues. Right. So. The first thing I'm gonna do is kind of just spin around and see what's across the street. Oh, well that's interesting. Huh. Somebody's got uh, a extender here, so it looks like they're probably doing some work on this property since it's parked there. Good sign, right? This property shows some neglect. It looks like they might be doing something with the roof or otherwise. Um, but it looks like a nice, quiet little residential street. We'll get into more in a moment. Um, and I, I think that's, you know, super cool. You can also see 
that this property is for sale, right? So, um, it, and it looks like it's sold. So you might actually go back and use this as a comp, right? So little nuggets you can pick up from, uh, from Google. But what do I see here? I see, again, that nice driveway, but I didn't see that it's got, you know, areas that need repair. Again, not an urgent thing. I wouldn't, this wouldn't stop someone from renting the unit, but you see a little bit more detail than you saw, right, in this rental property that cut that off. So be wary is what I'm, uh, the message is here. And, and what I like to do is say, okay, well, here's one car. There's definitely room for two, right? So cool. And here uh, you see a bit of a different look. I've got flowers here. Uh, where I had some shrubs or some uh, otherwise plants right here. So, you know, at some point, someone's taking care of this. I see that the grass here probably could use some replanting, but again, not a deal breaker. So let's do this. Let's cruise down the street. So I see that some of the houses have on street park or have uh, cars parked on the street, but largely it doesn't. So, you know, those might be visitors to those houses. So the, the street's going to be nice and clear. And this looks like uh, it was taken during the summer because I see dandelions growing. But if this was taken during the winter, this Google, when the Google truck rolled through, you would want to see like, are there leaves in the dry, uh, on the lawn? Are people caring for them? And that's kind of what I look for, right? Like, what's the state of the neighborhood? Are people keeping up their houses? That one looks good, right? Are the, are the owners, if these are rentals keeping up these houses, these look good. Grass needs a mow, right? Um, and, and you're just looking for kind of overall quality, right? These look nice. So this looks like a nice neighborhood. And then, you know, one of the other things you can do is look at the, the type of cars that are parked on this road. It's kind of a signal of socioeconomic class. I see SUV, uh, mini SUV, SUV, uh, sedan, right? It just kind of gives you a signal of what kind of person lives here. Here's another SUV. So let's go back to the main house and go the other way, right? So I know there's trash and, and regular garbage service here. Um, what's here? Uh, this house looks a little less cared for, but they're still pretty good, right? I'd love to see people take care of their lawns a little better, but here's a nice flower planting plot, right? And, oh, it looks like these trucks that um, are on the street are people, elect here's an electrical one, an electrical one. So someone's having some improvements or, or fixing something in their house. That's what you want to see, right? People caring for their houses. So... I think I've seen enough here, um, but you know you can really get a look uh, at this and see. You know, okay, you know I, I had said a moment ago it's pretty walking distance to Monroe Avenue. Well, here I am, right where you can see some buildings here, and this is uh, Monroe, the intersection of Monroe Avenue. So I can see that there's some nice amenities here, like a barber shop, right, like a butcher shop. Uh, it, again, a nice area to live. And now I want to look at that neighborhood in more detail. So I'm going to click into uh, back over here and I'm going to pull the zip code uh, of this property, 14620. And I'm going to plug it into this tool called Niche. And when I go into Niche, I plug in my zip code and I click on what comes back. And this gives me a great deal of information about the neighborhood itself. Uh, I can see this is an A neighborhood. It's getting dinged for not having great public schools, not great housing. Uh, I can see that this is in Brighton. I happen to know Brighton is a nice area of Rochester. And I can see that the medium home value is high, 156K. I like that, right? And you can get the median rent, right? Uh, I can see that largely these are homes that are, are decent in home value. And 70% of the people who live here in this zip code are renters. So I'm surrounded by like-minded uh, landlords, right? These are people who are taking care of their homes as landlords. Remember what you looked at in the Google, uh, in the Google Drive, for us, sorry, uh, the Google Maps Street View, right? We looked at those homes and they're being well taken care of and it's largely renters. So that's a good sign. Right. I can also actually, you know, um, scroll down here. It kind of shows you the map of like what's in the zip code. So it gives you a sense of how big it is and what it encompasses. Uh, one of the things I like to see is this one. 
right? What's the median household income? Because this goes directly into, can the resident who lives here pay the rent you're going to ask? And I like to usually take this and I plug it into uh, a rent to income ratio. So once I land on what the rent is, uh, and I divide you know, this um, 50, 51,000 number by 12, I wanna see the rent to income ratio uh, below 30%, right? So uh, you want, that, that tells me that someone can use 30% of their income to afford the property. So definitely something you wanna know. And here I can see another thing I like to see is college educated um, landlords, or sorry, college educated tenants, right? When I look at this, you know, I see like 53% are college educated. I think that's fantastic, right? It, it's, it means that they likely have higher paying jobs. Um, and I like to see that. If you want to know more about these residents, you can click in here and you can see demographics, right? Racial diversity, uh, uh, age, you know, who's, who's renting uh, in this area, right? This High, the highest percentage is people who are 25 to 34 years old, right? So a younger demographic, but lots of great information here. Another, another thing I'm gonna mention here is that you don't wanna rely just on one tool. I like to get as much information as possible about an area, especially if I don't know it that well, right? So sometimes I'll come over to Roofstock and again, I'll take this address and I'll see what Roofstock has to say about this area. For those who don't know Roofstock, it's a turnkey property uh, investment in, uh, 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 company. But you know, I can. It, it kind of looks. I, it pulled up my property, and if I want to see this property's rating, I can see it. Right? It's a three star out of four. So why does it get three stars? Well, a little bit lower than median uh, home value. Median income's a little lower. Right? Great unemployment. Uh, great, sorry, great employment, right? That's what you want to see because tenants need to be employed to pay their rent. Uh, percentage of owner occupied, it's over 50%. It, again, this data point kind of differs from what we saw before where it was mostly renters, but this one doesn't, right? The average school rating is low. Another, you, and again, take this as you will, it's a data point, right? And I might actually take another one. So let's pull out the zip code again, and we're gonna use this tool, best places to live. And I'm gonna say, plug in the zip code, tell me about 14620. Okay, so this tells me this is something interesting. Population growth is going down. That might be a red flag, right? If I am worried about buying in an area where people are leaving, that could be a red flag. Here I see a different median income, not so high, 40 instead of 51 but a higher median home price, but the same roughly median age that we saw kind of over here, right? 25 to 34 and, you know, comfort index climate versus winter, right? So you have more detail here, right? Um, what are the pros? Arts, education, cost of housing, snow, obviously. It's kind of why I left Rochester. Um, but you, you kind of learn more about the city, the highlights, the cost of living, that kind of thing. So again, take your, choose your data points, um, but then go in and make your own judgment, right? So now I know that this is in a good area. I think I can get tenants who can pay their bills. Uh, and now I wanna know what does this look like as an investment? So we're gonna go over here. I use a tool called Deal Check. Highly recommend you do too. Uh, you can see some ones that I've run already through Deal Check. And one of the things I'm going to tell you is that you, this is a paid service, well worth the money you pay for it. If you catch them over Black Friday, you'll find a heck of a deal uh, where you get a giant chunk of a discount. Uh, so look for that you know, upcoming this Thanksgiving. But this is my go-to tool rather than using a spreadsheet because I wanna know, you know quickly what can this property do? What does it look like? And I've already got a profile in here. When I click on uh, over here, uh, I have already put in my own purchase criteria for, um, for my rentals. They call it a rental template. And I've got some stuff in here and it, it basically allows you to put in some things that it will apply as uh, constants to anything you choose 
to um, run through it. Uh, for me, I put in a 25% down payment for a duplex, that's common. Uh, I always adjust the interest rate as they go up and down, and I usually do 30 year fix. Um, I put in 7% for my purchase costs for closing and title work that has actually proven to be very accurate. Uh, rehab costs, if any, I, I put in here. Um, you can actually see that you can itemize those rehab costs. I'm gonna take this one out. Uh, that's a loading fee for my property manager, but I have it in there as default. Um, and you can estimate things like rehab costs. So in here, you guys noticed that I saw some appliances that I really didn't like. Right, so I, like the two dishwashers. So I might say, uh, okay, let's say, you know, $1,100 uh, for dishwashers, right? And I'm gonna factor that into uh, my template. But actually this, sorry, this isn't where I should put it in because uh, that'll be on everyone. But uh, you get the idea, right? You can actually customize individual ones uh, to be what you want if you know you're gonna have rehab expenses. The big one is operating expenses. Uh, and there's some that are in here by default. Uh, I have a few that are very conservative. Uh, my property manager charges me 9%, so that is a constant, it's always in there. And I put in 10% of rent for CapEx and 10% for maintenance. And those are crazy high, especially now that we've looked at this property and we know, right? But I always start conservative. You can dial these down later. Um, and then I have a couple other things in here. Lawn care and snow removal, as a landlord, I pay for these, so I put them in there. And again, I pay for water, so I budget $70 a month. So now I'm gonna go back to my properties and I'm gonna go say add property and we're gonna click here and we're gonna grab the address and plug it back into deal check and we're gonna use that default rental template. You can have more than one template, depends on your goals. Uh, I only use one and I'm gonna say import property data. And as I click into this text box, and I paste it in, it actually goes and looks it up for me. So I just click on what deal check found and I realize that there it is, there's my property. And I click search and it automatically pulls in all this information about the property. Like it's a six bedroom, two bath, there's the square footage. I can even see more if I want, I don't need to see it. Um, it pulls in the Zillow's estimate for the property. Uh, it's Zillow's rental estimates, which we'll adjust here in a moment. Property tax and this is estimated, these are usually wrong, which is why I was saying over here, you know, pull up the property tax details because you're gonna want that information to plug in to deal check. And then property insurance, I think that's pretty fair for this style of house, about 1500 a year, and some pictures. So we'll say save property. Now what this does is it automatically creates an entry for it and evaluates some things about it. And here it tells me this is how much cash I'd need to close. I can expect $148 a month in cash flow. It's a 6% cap and a 1.6% cash on cash. Now I might have, and I should have, my own uh, estimates here is, you know, in terms of cap rate and cash on cash and what I'm looking for. But this tool really lets you see it in one place. So here's what I'm gonna go do. I'm gonna go from, I'm gonna show you this in a moment. We're gonna go back and change some things in this area we call the purchase worksheet. So again, the purchase prices here, we're gonna assume that stays the same for time being. We're gonna go down here to operating expenses, click edit, and it pulled in 10,000, but we know that this is only 8,335. So we're gonna go in and we're going to change that here to 8,335. And we know that this is a pretty clean property, right? So I'm gonna drop uh, these numbers to five and five, even that might be a little high, right? And now I'm gonna go back over here to this section, property analysis. This is where you're gonna spend a lot of your time, right? Here's my purchase price. Here's the amount I'm gonna finance. Here's the down payment I need to bring. Here's my purchase costs, my closing costs, and then rehab costs. Right, I'm gonna click on this little pen and I'm actually gonna put in rehab costs here because again, we saw, I'm gonna put in like 1400 for two new dishwashers, right? Because I just didn't like the ones we had um, for this neighborhood. So total cash to close, 115K. The financing information is here, right? And then here is where you're gonna spend a lot of your time. And this is cash flow, but cash flow for year one. Now, 
here's my gross rent. We're going to get to rent in a minute. Uh, I always choose 5% for vacancy. That's one of those things in the template I actually didn't show it to you, but it's there. You can dial that up or down, but I always plan for vacancy. Uh, and then you can see here's my operating income from doing rent collection. My operating expenses are 42% of them. I mean, that's really nice, right? You want that below 50%. You're in New York, so property taxes are higher and they represent, if I hover over this pie chart, 40% of my expenses. That's pretty high, but it's expected for this area. And that takes my net operating income or NOI to 2360 um, or 1180 per unit of the duplex. Now let's take my loan payments out of this, which would be 1637 PNI, uh, you know, principal and interest. Uh, it, it part of the, uh, it, it doesn't actually, uh, I don't think it includes the taxes, it's not pity. And then this gives me my cash flow every month of 723, 362 from each unit, and my post tax cash flow. So again, I can get a really good evaluation of this property. Now I could take all of this and plug it into a spreadsheet later on, but I get a really quick thumbnail of what this looks like. And then you see investment returns and it's year one, you're spending a ton of money out of pocket, you're gonna see negative numbers, don't let that scare you. Again, financial ratios are a point in time, what's my rent to value? I'm not gonna go into what these ratios are, we'll do that in a later, fork, a later uh, recording but you can get those information. And then notice it's got some purchase criteria here, right? It's passing the 1% rule, it passes the 50% rule, it's cash flow meets these requirements. And these purchase criteria are things I've set up in advance. You get some defaults from deal check, but you can flex those and change those however you want. And here I usually stayed under 80,000 in total cash needed, but you saw I'm breaking that. So it shows as red. Now, one of the nifty things about deal check is it has its own rental comp engine so if i click in here it's going to tell me you know what those what what it thinks the rent is amount and it's used it's it's something called rent cast right and you know it's saying the rent cast here is 2170 what's interesting is that there were no comps found right usually there's a list of comps here for other properties i'll just I'll jump into another one and show you what that looks like um, for another property. So you would have something like this, right? I would, it would show you comparable rentals to the Salina Street house. Here's one that's 0.15 miles away that rents for 17. Here's 0.5 rents for 1100 and so forth. And you can compare these, these are three ones, right? But that's what should show up here. So what's interesting is I wasn't expecting to see that here because you have a lot of, you know, similar style houses in the neighborhood. But even if I had this, this isn't exactly what I would always use. I want to look at the rent, what I think the rent is, because I want, you know, this looks great on paper, but I want to see my cash flow looks great on paper, right? But is it really realistic that I'm going to get 4340 in rent, right? If I double click on that, right, that's 2170. So the best place and tools I use, again, use multiple tools. Right, I'm gonna use Rentometer, which I also, Rentometer I, Pro, I paid for a subscription. Wink, wink, do this around Thanksgiving when Black Friday comes around. I pop in my address and I select, a, this is a three bedroom with one bath and I click uh, house and duplex and I say look back 12 months, I can even go shorter. Uh, if I wanna see you know what recent rents are, that's sometimes uh, really good to do too, to get recent, to see the recent rents, but I'll go back 12 months. And then I'm gonna see that, okay, here's what Rentometer thinks the rent's gonna be. Average is 1670 and the median is pretty close to that, right? So I might, I might say 1670. And you can see at the 75th percentile, it goes up to 1900. So go back to deal check. Am I gonna get 2170 for this house? Probably not. Uh, we'll close a couple of these tabs to get them out of the way, um, right? So I I don't know that that's accurate, right? The rent that I had there. So I'm actually going to go into Rentcast, which again was the tool that Deal Check uses, and I find this to be useful as another point of information. But I don't rely on so much as uh, what I see here, and I'll show you why in a moment. 
uh, as it looks this up, it tells me um, where the, it's, it's, a, it's the same type of tool as deal check, right? It's also free. This one you don't pay for. Um, but it tells me some, some interesting stats. But what I don't like is I have no ability to control the aging, right? You can see some of these are 219 days ago, 118, 144, one day ago, right? So I would almost throw out anything here and not use that information. But, you know, here's one that's 1925, right? That's 0.7 miles away. It's a 3-1. And it's a 1600 square foot, so probably a little, you know, a little different than mine. Uh, and here's one that was, you know, 41 days ago, kind of recent, 1600. And then up here, you kind of get that um, that price per square foot and per bedroom, right? So uh, it's going to be about 1650. And here you see some alignment between, you know, what Rentcast has and what RentCheck says, right? The high is 2000. That's kind of where we are here, right? So. Again, it's never gonna be 100% accurate, but you're looking for congruence. And I can tell you that this 2170 looks completely wrong, right? So let's even be conservative and say it's 1650, right? So 1650, now I click go back, it takes me back here, and my positive cash flow now looks negative, right? Um, because I'm not collecting as much in rent, I'm only getting 3,300. So this might change the equation for me, right? And it, and it might be the case that I believe that, uh, you know, if I can change some of the variables here. Like for example, I can go back to my purchase worksheet and say, you know what, this property is in fantastic shape. You know, we're gonna, we're gonna cut this back to, you know, three and four, right? And then I go, I don't recommend you generally doing this unless you believe the numbers are accurate for maintenance and CapEx. Don't just play what if and pretend to yourself that you're not seeing something for what it actually is, right? And then down here, this looks a little better. I get from a negative to a positive, but it's only 27 bucks a month. That really doesn't meet my, my needs, right? Like cash on cash is 0.3. 5.6% cash. I, I am not going to get probably the cash flow that I want coming off this property, right? Um, so that you know that's something also that I would look at. Um, I'm going to close this out because it's getting kind of long. One thing I didn't show you, but I do want you to see is um, this is something you almost want to do as like be, the next thing off of Zillow is check the crime in the neighborhood. I didn't do this here because I know the neighborhood. But if you don't know the neighborhood, pop in the address, click the uh, thing, and you can see some really interesting things, right? These are all the police reports that were recently said, like way away from me up here, I can see a pretty dangerous neighborhood, right? But down here, if I zoom in, I don't really see anything around me, right? I see, if I click on this, I see a theft. I can click on more information, this comes you know, from, right from the police department, Pettit Larceny, right? Uh, on June 28th, uh, I can I can zoom in there. Uh, I think there might be something hiding back there. No, that's the only one. Um, so I think it's pretty good. Like it's, you know, it's a safe neighborhood for my tenants. And I wanna know that. So back to deal check, right? Like again, understand that, you know, when you're buying a property, you're not buying it for year one, right? You wanna look at the future as well. Um, and there's a great little section under property analysis that, uh, that is buy and hold projections. And it kind of shows you all of the information about what does your one, two, three look like? And then let's go higher. What's your five? What's your 10? What's a 20 year holding period look like, right? And this is where you want to spend some time too, right? Like, what does this look like? How do the expenses grow over time? How does your income grow over time? Right, and understand for the lifetime you're expecting to buy and hold this property, what does that cash flow look like? Right, and and even down here, there's some great you know information about how your equity equity is going to grow, how the loan balance decreases, and uh, your loan to value uh, changes over time. Uh, information on you know what it would look like uh, to sell the property and what you would get. Right, you know at the end, if I hold this you know for uh, 30 years, right? At the end, my investment of $100,000 kicks out $628,000, $629,000 based on my cumulative cash flow, uh, this, you know, the equity I have in the property and the sale proceeds. 
And then you have all the great, uh, very useful and very typical financial ratios for the product. Again, early in the life of the, pro of the property, you're gonna see things go negative like ROI. So this is uh, how I would jump into this. There's much more to see here and do here. This has gone too long already, uh, but you know you can even see rental comps for comparable sales, right? So you can see like, hey, is you know this property offered uh, at three hundred eighteen thousand? How does that look against things that have sold here recently? And again, you would get some of these comps from your agent and compare against what you saw here. Multiple data points. If I can drive one thing and leave you with one thought in your head, it is get multiple data points, right? You're never gonna be able to predict the future 100%, but if you have these data points, you can coalesce around numbers and get an idea that you're in the right place, that your estimates are, are grounded in data and information. All right, that's enough for this property. We will see you again uh, when we evaluate a property next week. Thank you for spending this extraordinary long amount of time uh, looking at a property. Uh, we'll dig into another one next week. Thanks. Talk to you soon.